Are you training too? I was just about to finish up, but if you want to join in, I can stick around a while longer. Oh no, it's fine. Just do your thing. Don't mind me. Come on, don't be shy. Phew, I beat, but we're finally done. I was already training when you got here, and I finished right alongside you. Guess I outlasted you, huh? Speak for yourself. I'm always looking to improve. By the way, Professor, something I wanted to ask. Are you really Captain Gerald's kid? That's a pretty detached tone to take about your own family. What's your opinion of him, then? You must look up to him, at least. It doesn't sound like you really appreciate him. You didn't even know until you came here that he used to lead the Knights of Saros, did you? If it weren't for him, you wouldn't be half the person you are now. You probably never even thought about how lucky you are. Oh, okay, this really bothers me. Listen up. I don't care if you're the teacher and I'm the student. I'm going to outshine you. I know you were some famous mercenary before you came here, but let me tell you something. I'm going to be better than you ever were. In fact, I'll surpass you in no time at all. So don't blink. You might miss it. Hey, Professor. Got a minute? Look, I'm sorry I snapped at you. I didn't mean to lose my temper. I was rude to you. I should have known better. I thought you might say that. In that way, you're just like Captain Gerald. You accept other people. You don't let petty details get under your skin. Well, when I was a kid, I kind of latched onto him. I've been calling myself his apprentice ever since. He spent some time in the village I grew up in. Actually, you weren't with him back then. Why not? Huh. Maybe he left you with a relative or something. Anyway, back then, Gerald's job was to deal with poachers. Well, they were bandits, but we called them poachers. Nobody in the village could stand up to them. But your dad, he took them on like it was nothing. I was so impressed. All I could think was how amazing mercenaries were. I'd lived in that tiny village my whole life. So to me, Captain Gerald was nothing short of a legend. So I went right up to him, and I told him I was going to be his apprentice. He didn't stick around long after that, but he did teach me a lot while he was with us. Tactics, strategy, training routines, it was all so new and exciting. So after he left, I kept at it, kept training, just like he taught me. Me too. I always planned to meet him again once I became a top-tier mercenary. But I'm just glad I got to see him, to thank him properly and all. I've spent my whole life working to become a great mercenary like your father. There were so many times when I wanted to ask his advice, but I couldn't. I just had to make do. That's how I've made it this far. Just hard work, all on my own. But then you come along, and it's like you don't appreciate Captain Gerald at all, or how lucky you were to have him around your whole life. No. Oh. It still really bothers me. You might be his kid, but I'm still his best apprentice. Got it? Hey, Professor. You all alone here? I mean, you're not waiting for anyone or anything, are you? <laughs> Liar. I saw Lady Rhea just moments ago. She was in the reception hall. Anyway, I saw you heading to the tower, so I thought I'd drop by. I figured you might be lonely. Hey, don't make it weird. By the way, have you heard the legend about this place? 
They say if a guy and a girl make a promise here together, the goddess will make sure it's kept. It's a pretty well-known legend. Thing is, the way the story goes, it doesn't work all the time. It has to be the night of the ball. Tonight. So, since it's just you and me here, what do you say we give it a go? I mean, I don't know if the goddess will really take the time for a pair like us, but it's worth a try. Well, you know, let's make some kind of promise. We've got the chance, it'd be a shame to waste it. I mean, not something romantic or anything. That'd be weird. We could promise I'll become a top-tier mercenary. Though, I guess that's more of a wish. Let's see... Okay, I've got it. I solemnly swear to meet you once more on this very ground as a mercenary beyond compare. Oh, but that was all about me. No fair. You probably have something you want to promise, too. <laughs> you really do take after Captain Gerald. Always putting others first. All right then, Goddess. You heard the promise. It's a done deal. Say, Professor, why did you come out here anyway? Ah, oh, well, it is pretty crowded down there. I guess I shouldn't have interrupted. I'll leave you to it. But don't stay out here too long, all right? You'll catch a cold. Hey, Professor, can we talk? I feel terrible about the last time we spoke. I was trying to apologize and just ended up losing my temper again. I'm really sorry. I figured you'd say that, but I still feel like an idiot. Somehow, I just have a hard time keeping my feelings in check around you. And I think if I don't just tell you what I'm thinking, we'll never be able to have a normal conversation. So, let me clear the air. I want us to, uh, engage. Yeah, I... Uh, wait, what? No, I mean in a duel. I know it's a sudden thing to ask, but I'm not going to feel settled until I know where I stand. Would you do that for me? Good. Don't hold back, okay? I want to see you at your absolute best. Phew. You got me. I'm completely outmatched. Maybe, but you are definitely stronger. Honestly, that's what I needed to see. You're a true successor to Captain Gerald's style of swordplay. I almost felt like you were him. I thought I was competing with you, but that's as pointless as competing against him would have been. So instead of that, I'm going to focus on keeping the promise I made to him. Captain Gerald said that if anything should happen to him, I'd have to support you in his place. He didn't sound serious at the time, but it was right before he... You know, before we lost him. So, I've decided. I'd like to do just what he said. I know I'm not as strong as I need to be, but I swear to you, I'll train until I am. What do you say? Can I call you my employer? Yes! It's official! I'll protect you no matter what! Professor? What are you doing here? I was talking to Gerald. The sky feels so close, like you can almost touch the stars. I thought my voice might reach him. That the war's finally over. And that his kid and his greatest apprentice did an amazing job out there. <laughs> Maybe I'm overselling the part I played. Thanks, but I was nothing compared to you. I feel like an idiot for ever thinking I could surpass you. I have managed to keep my promise, though. So, how would you feel about hiring me again? 
Can't exactly go and break my word now, can I? The war's over, but the enemy might still be lurking. What if they're waiting until I'm gone to attack you? But... Oh, I get it. You're probably pretty tired of me always trailing after you, huh? Love? As in... As in the way a commander loves his soldiers, right? Of course that's what you mean. Oh, that's... Uh, that kind of love. Can this really be happening? You want to marry me? I... Of course I will. You are being serious, right? That would be an awful joke. I'm sorry. I should have been more honest. All that stuff about my promise a minute ago, it was mostly just an excuse for wanting to be near you. But I'm not really the romantic type, so I had a hard time coming out and saying it. Are you sure this is what you want, though? I know I'm not exactly conventional. Yes, I'm really wearing this ring then, aren't I? But I do still have a promise to keep with Captain Gerald, too. You've got a big job ahead of you, building a whole new Fodlin. I'm going to support you through all of that. Make sure it never gets to be too much. <laughs> then that's that. I promise to protect you until death parts us. And I'll be happy for you to do the same for me.